Hey, the magic button works. <laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. Today's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to learn all about spring clamps. we got three different sized spring clamps we're going to use today, the one inch, the two inch, and the three inch. And I'm going to explain everything you need to know about spring clamps, how to use them, what they're for, uh, how to make them work for you instead of you just getting frustrated every time you clamp something down. I'm going to show you a few little things I make with spring clamps. And, uh, yeah, I'll pop a few things in and me using them, I use them all the time. So, uh, for people who don't know how to use a spring clamp, uh, watch the video and, uh, I'll see you in a minute. I got to set up. All right. Thanks for watching. All right, everybody, you ready? Here we go. Spring clamps. All right. First of all, the uh, the original spring clamp was uh, these two things right here. Spring clamps. They work just like this. You can pinch things together, hold them together, uh, whatever you want. See? Spring clamps. But people got tired of holding things like that forever while the glue dried, so they invented this guy right here. All right, so today we're going to talk about three different sizes. I have them right here. There's the three inch, the two inch, and the one inch. You'd think the bigger ones... Uh, would put more pressure on you and clamp things down and be really bad, but it's the other way around. Uh, this guy, not so bad when you put it on your finger. You put this guy on your finger right here, it's gonna hurt. That hurts a little bit, right? Ah, good lord. Uh, put, put a one inch clamp on your finger like this, uh, you won't be able to stand it. I'm not gonna do it because you're gonna hurt yourself. All right, so the one inch spring clamps are these little guys right here. And the reason they call them that is because they open to one inch, barely. And they clamp things down and they work well from one inch to about an eighth of an inch. This is the two inch clamp right here. It opens to two inches and it's good for clamping from two inches to one inch. And the last one is the three inch. It actually opens a little wider than that. It's pretty easy to open. Um, but it clamps good from uh, three to two inches. So uh, depending on your width of your boards you want to laminate together or hold or pieces you want to hold on to because you know you can clamp that down there and that works good uh, but you can move it take a two inch clamp and do the same damn thing uh, not so much and uh, the one inch clamp on something that's an inch and a half you can't even get it on there so uh, never mind most people when they see spring clamps they think of one thing and one thing only <laughs> the best place to put them is on your potato chips and it works really good. It keeps everything sealed up and it works wonderful, but it works even better for uh, woodworking. Oh, and I'm going to show you that right now. So I use spring clamps all the time for holding uh, pieces to jigs. Attach this down here and I'll take this and I'll screw one board to the next board. And it helps really helps hold it in place. It's like having a third hand. And for me, I need all the hands I can get because I'm old. It works really good. You know, you don't have to worry about it slipping. Just put it on there, you put a couple screws in it, and you flush them away, and you're good to go. We'll get rid of that. Oh. Another thing it's really good for is attaching. Let's say you're gonna have to attach one piece to the other and want to glue it up, and you want to hold it in place. Take a little clamp, put them on there, hold that in place. Uh, if you got to nail this down, you can nail it as you go. It works really well for holding things in place, or you want to laminate one board to the next. You just take a series of these little one-inch clamps and you clamp them down about every five or six inches or so. All right, so you can glue them down like this. So if you want to add a hunk of wood to something, you don't want to put pins in it to hold it, and you just want to glue it down, these little guys will work uh, really well. So another thing I use uh, clamps for, and hopefully we can see it on the other camera, I'm going to show you how I go about assembling crown, uh, the quick version. First thing I have is a header, right? We got a header right here. I got a hunk of bull nose that we're gonna make and we're gonna put this on top of here. And let's say this thing is eight feet long. How the hell are we gonna hold it together? Well, as you flush out the back here, and this is how I went about attaching the bull nose of the crown. Just hold it in place like that. And I'm just gonna take a couple pins and just pin it in place. And usually I glue all this, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Held it in place, right? If you can clamp it in place and hold it, that's great. All right, this thing we're gonna do backwards like this. Now we have our crown, right? So we have our bullnose here, our header here, and I wanna attach the crown like that. 
If this thing's 10 feet long, the easiest way to do that is by spring clamping this down into place like this. And this crown is upside down. Good golly. And usually what I do is I'll, wind, I'll put a little glue on the top and bottom. I'll put it in place like this and I'll clamp it in place using spring clamps. This will work for all sorts of different types of molding. And there you go, right? Holds it in place. It's like a third and fourth hand. I don't have to worry about any of this. I just pin this in place and on to the next. So it works really well for assembling cabinets with face frames on it. You know, you uh, got one right here. I have to run molding around the inside of the face frame to have this look for an inset door. And when I was holding these in here, I just clamped them in place. You don't even need to nail it if you have this glued in place. And you just clamp them in using three or four clamps and it would hold it in place for you, just like that. I make handles. I don't know if you can see this. I'm gonna put it on the other screen over there. I make these little jewelry box handles and I'll put a picture of a jewelry box over here that has this exact handle on it. I've done this a bunch of times. It's really easy to do. Um, and what it looks like when you start is this. And let's see. I'm gonna zoom this one in a little bit more. Hold on. So we got this little guy right here. And what I did, I rounded it over after it was all glued together. But this is the way it goes together. This is a Zircote hunk of wood right here. Very expensive. Um, and you gotta use it sparingly. It's very hard, very dense. And you just glue it in place and you just clamp it down like this. All right, let's clamp the ends first because you want them locked into place. And then you can put these guys here on a slight angle on opposite sides to clamp it down. You can put them straight on like this also as well, but do them on opposite sides because it'll change the pressure. And I'm going to show you why I do it like this in a minute. So handles with inlays. Um, I also do inlays like this. And I'll show you right now. Okay, another. This is a piece of wenge with a piece of curly maple right here. And we'll, we'll just actually glue this guy up. You gotta get it on both sides because you want it to get everywhere. And if you had a brush, that would be better. But right now we're just kind of speeding it up, you know what I'm saying? All right, so I'm just gonna lay this puppy in place like this. And what we're gonna use is the smaller ones now because the small ones have the most power for anything under an inch. You can't get the pressure out of a three inch that you can get out of a one inch when it comes to clamping down small things. It just doesn't have the power. All right, and that's what it looks like. And just leave it glued up like that. I would make like three or four foot long pieces just like this. And then I can make a wrap for a jewelry box or any, anything really that you want to inlay something in. And spring clamps. They're mainly for laminating pieces together. Let's say we want to put two pieces of pine together. Well, what are we going to do? We can't use the little guys, right? Because they're too small. We can use the two inch ones, right? Let me show you a little trick first. Hold on. Sorry if I've been chewing gum. I apologize. I'm doing this real fast. I wouldn't do this normally like this, but uh, we're just going to do the squish together method. You put it together and give it the old swirly gig like this. Yeah. There we go. Okay, we got glue. That's enough glue for right now. Okay, so now that you got them like this, right, what you're going to do before you do anything else is you're going to clamp the ends like this. And what this is doing is it's going to hold the ends completely flat. So the top and bottom should be super flat. And this should not move. And I'm going to take these and clamp them on there. I'm going to come on this side and clamp over here. So I'll tell you why in a second. There's a reason for this Mr. Kevin Madness and then one over here, right in the center. All right, just like that. This is the way you would go about gluing up, laminating two pieces of wood together. Wouldn't matter if it was uh, a foot tall or a foot long like this one is, or, you know, 10 feet long. So for all of you out there who want to build jewelry boxes, uh, kind of like this one right here, this is kind of an old jewelry box I made. Um, a lot of jewelry boxes have slip feathers in them because it looks cool to have those little slip feathers on the end and you can make all different patterns. I've got two different kinds over here, I think. Uh, something like that. The way you go about that normally would be to just take a piece of, uh, do I have a piece? Let's say this was a little wider because you need them at least an inch wide. You would take a piece of eighth inch uh, maple or cherry or walnut or whatever um, 
to have a contrasting color when you're making the jewelry box. Well, silly me, uh, because I'm crazy. Um, I made a pile of slip feathers that were two different colors. Uh, so you can see it's maple on one side and this is actually walnut on the other. The way you go about making these is you rip everything down to super small and I had to make a jig to fit through my sander to make these a little over a 16th of an inch each. And then when you go to glue them up, you have to glue them up like this. One on the end, right? Boom. And by putting them on the end, that will keep this whole thing from sliding around and doing crazy things. So once you got these established, right, and they're done with these spring clamps, what you're gonna do then is you're gonna go on the sharpest angle you can and then clamp them all the way across, all right? Spring clamp on opposite sides. So that way, I'm gonna go up about three or four inches, go all the way across here, boom, like this. Go up about three or four more inches, all the way across, as wide as you can make it. So actually, the spring clamp is actually rubbing up against the piece of wood. And you go back and forth either side till you get to the other end. So this is the way you would go about laminating up two pieces of wood that are really skinny. Um, clamp the ends first and then do a pattern like this right here, boom, to, uh, to glue that up. That way it gets across the whole thing. If you just clamped them up like this here in the center, you're just going to glue up the centers and the outside edges will be gappy because it's glue and it's wet and that's the way it works. So this is a no-no, okay, that is the proper way. As wide as you can get across here, opposite sides so that it has different pressures because it will tend to slide all over the place and it'll want to. And if you want to make these three quarters of an inch, glue them up at an inch and then rip them down later because it's gonna slide a little bit no matter what you do because glue's slippery. All right, more spring clamp tricks. Opposite sides like this uh, matters. You want to get them all centered in there. So that, this is the way you want to do it. You don't want to put them all in one line on one side because you want pressure going all different directions. And it's the same with this guy. All right, so I have this hunk of wood here and it's got a black line on it right here. So hopefully I can explain this uh, correctly. All right, so here's the deal. When people go to glue up their wood, there's a couple ways that you can get into trouble. First of all, you have to learn how to place the clamp on there perfectly flat. Level flat, okay? So this way you can see clamps on there flat. It doesn't move this hunk of wood. When we go to clamp something down, we want to come on there exactly dead square, not twisted like this. I could twist it this way and it'll push it this way. I could twist it like this, put it on there, and I'll shove it that way. The problem that most people have besides that is they'll come in on an angle like this from the top and it will pull it towards you. Just like that, here, I'll do it again. All right, put it down, I'm not doing anything. We go to clamp it down, it'll pull it because it's on an angle like this. And it pulls it towards you. Now that could be to your advantage also, so just give me a minute. And then the other problem is you're too low and when you clamp it down, it pushes it the other direction. To prevent this, you gotta practice going straight on and clamp it straight down so it doesn't move. That's very important. When you're putting two pieces of slippery wood together, it wants to do that. So if the ass end is too high, it's going to pull it towards you. If the uh, butt end is too low, it's going to push it away from you. Let's say we're doing it on the side here. Let's see, can I get you? I don't know if that's in focus. When you're clamping something like this and your board's all crooked and you want to shove it in a little bit because your board's sticking out like this, you can actually put a little downward pressure on it and it'll shove it over till it's flush. Likewise, if it's really crooked like this and you want to bring this towards you or towards the outside edge you raise it up and bring it towards you that's why most people have a problem with gluing things up so this is flush here and let's say this is sticking out because the board was crooked we're going to just take this clamp here and bring it slightly down a little bit and push it over see how it pushes it all right if it's the other way around and it's in we want to pull it out we're going to raise it up and pull it towards us see how that's working Okay, boom, push, lift, pull. Here's another good, good reason for spring clamps is you can clamp stuff down and it's there and uh, you know, a third, fourth hand. So spring clamps, I got tons of them. They're, I don't even know how many I got. Uh, probably 30 or 40 of them. Uh, I use them on installs. I use them for uh, running molding, building stuff, putting face frames, holding things in place, attaching, uh, parts to jigs, uh, running crown molding, running a bullnose, all these things I use spring clamps for. I use them on a daily basis. 
I even use them to help hold up the camera parts and put sandbags on the back of some of the ones that go up here. I just use a big ass spring clamp and put on a 10 pound bag and boom, there it is. So spring clamps work for everything. And you know, if you have too many, you can always put them on your potato chips like I showed you before and it keeps them nice and fresh. Well, thanks for watching everybody. You have an awesome day. Go outside and play hug somebody you love. Be safe out there and I'll see you next time on Woodworking with Mr. Kevin. And uh, oh yeah, I'm gonna show you something. Okay, so I'm gonna flip on the other camera. See that thing right there? We're gonna go over this in one of the next couple of videos. This thing right here, if you think you know what this is right here, uh, comment below, because I'm gonna show you uh, how well this works or how well it doesn't work. Let me know what you think this is. It's one bit, one big strange looking bit. And uh, we're gonna have a video on this shortly. And it's got two bearings on it and it's, uh, it's kind of trippy. I've never seen one before and when I saw it, I had to buy it because uh, you know I'm always into these weird things and uh, I'll let you know what I think of it shortly. All right. Well, there you go. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye. All right. Now, now I got to get to work again. Subscribe now. Give me a minute. Okay. Oh, uh, yeah. Then you put them in a miter sled on. Blah, blah. There's a whole show on that. So, can you see me in the middle? <laughs> Will that work here? Uh, no. You see this? Uh, booger snot. Okay. All right. My goodness. <laughs> I got two pieces of wood right here. Two pieces that don't like each other. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. Yeah. I got so many damn clamps, I don't know what to do. I wouldn't steer you wrong with spring clamps. You just have to practice with them and start using your own imagination on how you can use them because I've heard people uh, can't even figure out what the hell they're for.